Welcome back to the channel, my name is Chris, and if you're new here, I make videos about coffee. Today, I'm going to be showing you the unboxing and the first setup of the Gaja Classic Pro, but to do that, we're gonna have to rewind about a month ago, back to January of 2021. I also want to apologize for the audio in advance as this was recorded before I sort of upgraded my audio game. Okay, so in the box you get the machine itself, a few manufacturer guys with warranty info and stuff, and this box. Right, so inside that little cardboard box, we've got a little pamphlet about the portafilter along with the different baskets that the machine does come with. So we have the portafilter itself, which has a plastic handle, which I was not a fan of when I used to have this machine back in March of 2020. This is the only portafilter that the machine does come with. It is a spouted portafilter. And we also get this bag of accessories. So in that little bag of accessories, we've got two baskets. We have one that looks like a standard portafilter basket with a relatively small looking dose. And we've got another one that looks like a pressurized portafilter basket. The machine also does come with a little plastic tamper, which honestly is not very enjoyable to use, so I'm just gonna throw that away. We also get a little plastic spoon scoopy thing, which I'm also not gonna be using. So the other thing we do get is also the cover for your drip tray, and compared to the old machine that I used to have, this is now painted white to sort of match the white exterior of this version of the Gacha Classic Pro. I will say that the finish on the drip tray cover is a little disappointing with a lot of the white paint slash vinyl finish sort of just peeling right off, especially around the sides. Uh, top surface is okay for the most part. It's a little dirty and could be cleaned up a bit. That's just something to take note of when you buy this machine. And there's a closer look at that. All right, so some of the first things that you're going to want to do when you set this machine up for the first time. First, you can remove your drip tray. It slides right out just like that. And you'll see here on the drip tray cover that you've got three holes and you're gonna want to match this top left hole into the back left corner of the drip tray like that. So the other thing you're going to want to do is remove the water tank. So the water tank includes the solenoid valve, which we're gonna have to put in by ourselves, as well as the power cable for the machine. So obviously, since you're going to be filling this up with water that you're going to be drinking out of, it is recommended that you give this a good wash first, just like you would any other dish using some soap. I don't know if it's dishwasher safe, but I wouldn't recommend doing it. But if you do, it's probably better to put it in the top rack instead of the bottom. So once you've got your water tank rinsed, you're gonna to wanna to put it back into the machine and it's fairly straightforward as to how you're gonna do it. So down here underneath the machine, you're gonna see that there are two little rubber tubes. You're just gonna to wanna to put that into the water tank. And once that's in, you can just push the water tank back into the machine. All right, so the next thing you're gonna to want to do is install the solenoid valve. So I don't think the orientation here really matters. It seems like the rubber piece kind of sits right in the middle of this valve. So if you look underneath the machine in the back left corner behind the group head, you're gonna see that there's a small hole and that's exactly where you're gonna stick the solenoid valve in. Do keep in mind that whenever you want to take out the water tank to do a deeper clean that you are going to have to remove the solenoid valve, which is very easy to do. All you've gotta do is pull it straight back down. So finally, to complete this, you have your drip tray. Just make sure the flat side goes back in towards the machine while the curved side faces the front. And again, put your drip tray cover on with the top left hole right underneath the solenoid valve. So all that's left to do is turn your machine around and use the included power cable, plug it in, plug it into a wall, and you're good to go. Okay, so something that I didn't mention in my initial recording about a month ago is that once this machine is set up, you're going to want to fill up the tank, and I would say that you want to run about half a tank through the group head and maybe another half a tank through the steam wand. Now to run the water through the group head, it's simple. All you gotta do is turn the machine on and then hit the middle button and just let the water go through. And to let water run through the steam wand, you're gonna to wanna to flip both the middle and the right switches. 
and also make sure that your Steam One knob is unlocked. So once you finish running water through both the group pen and the steam one, you can refill your tank again and you should be good to go. So that is it for this video. I do have a lot of other videos about the Gaja Classic Pro coming out from dialing in shots to steaming milk to some upgrades and mods. I'll leave links to all the other Gaja Classic Pro videos in the description down below for you to check out. So as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.